Hi everyone and welcome to the Goon Squad tutorial. My name is Zero and I'll be your teacher for the day. So here's my one minute of jabber so you can either skip forward or listen to me talk. <laughs> okay so this is like the second most requested tutorial I get in my inbox and that's how to make clothes for the kimono avatar. Um, this is actually pretty simple. It's following the same method I use for making all my clothes, and that is to have the model, export the model from Marvelous Designer, um, make up some clothes in there, bring it back in the blender and rig it, and then export it and then bring it into Second Life. It's a fairly easy, simple, and a process. Uh, it's fairly easy, simple. It's a fairly simple process that's made easy because the creator actually provides you with the dev kit, so you don't have to beg for it like some other people make you do. Um, but I'll give you the link to where you can get it, or you can just download my care package, and it has everything inside of it. So. Um, oh yeah, I guess I should warn you, uh, it's that time of the night, so my cats are running about fighting each other, so you may hear some rumbling and stuff in the background. Uh, I apologize in advance for that. It can't be helped. You know how cats are. Ugh. Anyway, that's my one minute of jabber, and it's time to dive into the tutorial. So, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the creator's website and download the dev kit. Or, like I said, it's actually in my care package along with everything else I'll be using in this tutorial. Um, I'm going to show you which one you do. You would just go to their website and scroll down until you see the kimono mesh body. And you would download uh, this link right here. And you will get two dev kits and .blend files. And I'm going to switch over to Blender and show you. You get two of them, uh, the Kimono Dummy Normal, Kimono Body Avastar, and we're going to be using the Avastar one because we already have Avastar installed, obviously. It's going to make it a lot easier, so I'm just going to open this real quick. And you'll see that it comes in and it's yellow and you see the lines that kind of look like edit mode. I actually know how to turn those off, but I forgot what button I picked. So... Oh, we just gotta have to deal with the lines on here for this tutorial. They don't do anything to hurt it or anything, but I know some people just hate it, but I can't remember. Um, so that aside, we're gonna actually look at this avatar and we're gonna export the body. In um, other tutorials, I suggested that you spread the character's legs apart a little bit to make making the clothes uh, easier. You would just, oh, let me press it and I'll show you my keys. One of these days, I'm going to remember to turn my screencast on before recording the videos. So you would just uh, click on the green loop, press R, and you would just rotate the legs apart a bit. But the kimono legs are fairly spread as in a default, so we don't really need to spread their legs open. Because, you know, we would do that in Marvelous because the uh, pants would get hooked in my thighs, but they have pretty good thigh gap, so we don't need to spread their legs. If you plan on it, you can. Yeah, you can do that if you want to. I'm just not for the sake of her trying to hurry up with this video. So we have it in the T-Pose and we're just going to select, go into object mode and select the model. And we're going to go to file, export, uh, Collada Day. And I'm going to name it, oh, that's already named. So we're just going to go to the presets at the bottom and select SL to open sim static. If you don't do this, your marvelous designer will crash. So make sure you check that from the preset menu and then press export. Okay, so now we have our body exported. We're just going to pause the video real quick and open up marvelous designer. Okay, we have marvelous designer open, and when you start it, you'll notice there'll be our avatar default one here. Um, I don't right now, but we can just go and open up our marvelous one that we just exported. So you're going to go to the top and select File, Open, Avatar, and then we're going to select the kimono avatar we just exported, and it's going to ask you what scale. You want to keep it at 100%, and then press OK, and it will save, import our kimono avatar. Now if you don't want to create a avatar, like a, what's it called? A day file every time you can actually save this as an avatar so we'll save it as an avatar and we'll save it as our kimono body and now you could just go to file 
open uh, avatar and you know you'll be able to open it wherever you want it'll say invalid path but you know it still works <sighs> now it's gonna sound like I just hit that cat and she just fell on the steps Ugh, anyway so now we have our body in here and we can start designing so these are the tools at the top that um, help you design this is the polygon tool and that lets you create whatever shape pretty much like the pen tool is in Photoshop you can create whatever you want with that um, so this, is that. this is the box tool it lets you create rectangles oh what's the rectangle tool it lets you create straight rectangles or squares or whatever you want uh, this is the circle tool you'll use this for creating like big circle skirts um, this is the internal tools uh, let me create a square to show you how those work this will let's push the sync button uh, this is a box tool for squares this is the internal polygon tool this allows you to create uh, shapes inside your pattern so we're gonna move this it's like that and it helps you attach things to it um, you can watch the marvelous designer video for more info on that but it's great for if you're trying to sew on pockets or anything like of that sort so I'm just going to delete that right now uh, same thing here this is oops let me put another square this is the internal square so if in case you need to make an internal pocket or something like that you can use it with the square and see right that and this is the internal circle now the thing about the internal circle is you can use this to cut holes into your pattern so I'm just gonna convert that into a hole and as you see we have a hole inside of our pattern um, this right here is the dart tool you can use this for creating uh, darts I just use them to create quick holes in there instead of going through circle tool internal circle or pattern or whatever to create holes also with the internal tools you can turn them into holes too you don't need just the internal circle so you can just make this shape and then click it and say convert to hole and then it has that wacky shape there so internal tools can be converted into holes uh, I use the dart tool to make quick holes and stuff for tails uh, but you know it's used for sewing and making things tight in one area I, I think I only took a basic sewing class in real life so I'm not entirely sure what darts do um, over here is the edit um, the pattern button so you just click it and you can edit and move things at a hole with that or you can rotate your pattern your 2d thing over here uh, this is the select key you'll be selecting a number of things with this so you just grab this or you can manipulate the dots here with this tool to change the shape um, this is the what button is this edit the curve point so you'll see uh, well I guess we have to show you the curve point tool this allows you to add curves to your pattern and this allows you to edit that curve point a little more uh, this tool right here is the add point so you can add more dots to manipulate them um, don't know why that is happening yes I'm doing something wrong all right, all right there we go so that is how to use marvelous designer in a nutshell oh wait I forgot uh, this is the sync tool in order for things to show up over here you have to make sure they're synced for example see how I have the square show up over here it's because it's synced but if I turn right, if I move this while we're still in sync mode it changes but if we turn off the sync mode nothing happens because it's not syncing it's not updating so we have to press this to pretty much refresh and update what we have um, the most important one is the simulation button in order to make the panel here turn into cloth we have to press play and then start the simulation so I'm gonna press play and as you see it bundles up onto the floor turn it into cloth so that's all of the stuff in a nutshell if you wanted more detail i suggest you watch my so you want to be a marvelous designer video 
All right, now let you know the basics of how to use Marvelous Designer. Also, uh, camera controls. Left, right click, shift. Uh, pretty much you're gonna be using just sh the right click. It's pretty much the same controls as Second Life, I believe. Anyway, now that you know how to use Marvelous Designer, let's get into designing. So you're gonna select the polygon tool. It's your best friend and pretty much just draw the shape of whatever clothing you want. If you want a t-shirt, just make a shape of a t-shirt. So this, and we're gonna make it go straight up the middle like so. And we're gonna click on the middle line here and select unfold. Yeah, they're so little. And I don't want this extra dot here because it's just another unnecessary dot. So I like to even it out. If you see, then we're gonna make the back. This is the front. And we're gonna make press Control C and then Control V and make the back part of the shirt. And I'm going to right click on it on the 3D menu, 3D side, and flip horizontally. You want the front to be like this and the back will always be flipped because if we didn't flip it when we go to import it into second life the back part would be invisible so we don't want that and i'm just going to position it behind the character like so move it forward and now we're going to start our sewing so there are various types of sewing methods in second I mean, marvelous designer there is the segment sewing which is what I adore the most and then there's free sewing which lets you sew uh, in a way that segment sewing can't but real huh let's try that never thought of trying free sewing and for good reason it's the devil <laughs> Let's try segment sewing to be safe, something that we know. So we're going to select one edge of it, click it, and then drag it over to the other part that you want to sew and click that. And you're gonna see it made a bunch of lines straight like this. And you always wanna make sure your lines are straight. If your lines are crossed like that, it's telling the Marvelous Designer to bring the lines, these two patterns together, and then twist it right here. So you're gonna get errors. So make sure that your lines are always straight. So I'm just gonna sew the rest here, making sure to leave the armhole uh, empty because if we sew it up, it'll just bunch up around her arm and we don't want that. So I'm gonna show her shoulder. Sew her shoulder here, here, under the armpit. So here, and I want to take care of this back collar, I want it straight, and you see how I have this like line right here, this little dot, if you delete that, it can make a straight collar, like so, but if you want to dip, it, a more natural dip, you can just use the curve tool, that saves time, but I prefer it to back to be straight. All right, now that we have the pants sewn, we're going to press play, and there we have a t-shirt for your kimono. Pretty easy, huh? Now you can do the same thing with pants, and you just select the polygon tool. I know it's kind of in vogue to have a bit of a stomach gap, so I'm gonna follow with that. And you're going to go straight down. You're gonna hold the shift if you are like me and blind and you need the snap guidance or so. You just hold down the shift key and it brings up a grid or so that you can snap to. So I'm gonna hold down shift and go right to the center of the crotch, maybe a little bit lower. And we're gonna actually, hang on, go try it again. Straight down. And we're gonna go over to the side and make a little bar here. This is where we're gonna sew the crotch together. And then we're gonna go straight down the legs, like so. Hold on, shift, make sure everything's even. <laughs> Me making things even, that's funny. <laughs> and we're gonna sew right up the thing and make a pair of pants. Now I like doing it symmetrical clothing because it's easy to just make one side and then right click on the, uh, the line here and unfold it. I guess it's called the folding line. I really should have paid attention in that sewing class. <laughs> 
and we can pull the pants out here. So I'm going to rearrange my pattern so that it's flat, making sure that we're not simulating this or else it's going to fall right to the floor. I'm going to erase this line here because I don't need it. We're going to make another copy of this. So click on it, control C, then control V and paste it here. We're going to flip it, put it here. And now we're just going to sew just like we did with the top. Now remember the little line we made here? We're going to actually remove this middle seam here because if and make this one line because if it's two lines that means we have to sew a line here sew a line there so with pants I like to just make it one cartoonish middle and a crotch area right there and we're just gonna sew from here to right here and just keep on sewing until it's all done And then we press play and watch it all simulate. So now we have a pair of tights, but you can see that the back is actually colliding with it. And there are a couple methods we can do to fix it. You could just grab, uh, press this key right here and grab it and then just pull it out. Sometimes that fixes the wrinkles. Uh, sometimes you actually have to modify the pattern and I would suggest pausing it. And if you don't want it to move, press and hold down the W key and click around the waistline. This as the pin tool, there's no clicking for it. So you have to hold down W and then click along the edge and that holds the butt up. But uh, I shouldn't click there. No, no, that's fine. And if you want to remove the pin, you could just click on the pin and say remove the pin. But I want all the pins there. Alright, so this is the back part and I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger because it seems to be too tight. So with that, let me press play and it helped a little bit, so we'll try making it a little looser again. But if you don't feel like doing this, you know, you can just fix this in blender by going into edit uh, edit uh, sculpt mode and puffing it out a bit that's what i usually do i just don't concern myself with the little things like that so let's try pulling their pants down a little more around our little paws all right and now we have that now say you want to put something on top of this like let's pretend that these are a pair of tights or leggings and you want to wear shorts on top of it this is how you layer your clothes so I'm going to select hold down shift go back to the 2d window hold down shift and select my pattern and then move it aside real quick so I can still look at my pants I mean the model so I have a good pair I don't look at the model so I can draw a pair of shorts uh, what we're going to do is do like we did with the pants select the polygon tool Grab this, put it down to the middle, create our, I have no idea what that would be called, little gap there, draw in some shorts, put this here, turn off play so they don't fall to the floor, unfold this middle here, delete the dot, press control C and V, actually, nope, nope while we have our pair of shorts this is a lot easier to do it this way um, let this start real quick we're going to select this and we're going to go over to the fabric tab and scroll all the way down to layer and put this on two um, this allows it to at like pretty much like the layers do on photoshop it tells them that this clothing goes on top of this one so they're not fighting each other 
trying to take the spot of layer one. So if ever you want to put a pair of clothing or something on top of another one, just make sure you go down here and put it on a separate layer. So I'm going to press Control C, Control V, and now we have two layer two fabrics. I wanted to do that while, uh, once, I didn't have to do it twice. So like before, we're just going to select the back, flip the back, bring it back here. We have a pair of hands, and like before, just sew our pants together. Whoops, cross line, no cross lines. Never cross the streams, keep the stream straight. So between the legs. And another tip I wanna give you is that you wanna make sure that you put the clothes as close to the avatar as you can before you hit play. Because the longer it is in the air, the more it's probably gonna, like, what's that word? Uh, it's draping so it's draping and then falling and it's just easier for you to once you have all your parts sewn because you can pull this apart so you can get it oops, you can pull this in apart so you can sew easier but once you have the parts sewn you want to make sure you're as close to the body as you can without it physically being inside the body so let's put this right here and that right there and then we're going to press play and voila you have a pair of shorts on top of your tights that are not fighting each other well for the most part not fighting each other so i'm going to talk about materials uh, this helps when you are in photoshop me blender <laughs> photoshop must be calling me so um you would select the pants go to basic uh, no, fabric at the top and assign it a color. So I'm gonna have, uh, hmm, let's have black shorts with, let me see, black shorts with, let's um, pause that, with pink tights, very 80s, and a white shirt. <laughs> Uh, real red shirt. I guess that's what fate wanted. Now the fact that these are all different colors, these are now on their own material. So when you go on the blender, you'll see later on how that is definitely going to help. So I'm going to pull this out of her crack and then export this for, um, well, I guess it's my pens. Remove all pens. There we go. Let's just leave it like that. We'll fix this all in um, Blender. Alright, so we have our outfit for the most part. Um, I guess I could make it smaller and do more fitting, but like I said, time is of the essence. Um, so we have our outfit, and now we are going to um, arrange our UV map. <laughs> Surprise! Everything you are creating with your polygon tool on this 2D window is actually your UV map your UV mapping so you don't have to unwrap any of this when you're done so make sure that they don't overlap each other like this because that'll be bad let's just put them on here so that it looks nice and neat and clean so shorts shirt and top so all right so here's our UV map of this whole object right here and we're just going to export it by going to file export OBJ. I'm going to dig through this and try to find out where I was saving. Um, let's see, we're gonna name this tutorial outfit, and you'll be you'll be shown this menu right here. We're going to try. Uh, we're gonna check the M key, the uh, M box here. Unified UV coordinates. Re remove collapsed triangles excuse me and cloth shape and then hit okay and that's pretty much all we need from Marvel's designer I mean I could fix this up a little more but uh, time all right so we're done with Marvel's designer let's jump back into blender so here's our marvelous I mean <laughs> here's our model I'm gonna press a and deselect it all then go to a new layer 
and then go file import object uh, tutorial object import and when you see it automatically snaps onto our avatar where we had it now like I said before there are some modifications I would like to make before I do this so I'm just going to select the body press tab to go into edit mode press the P key and so that separate by material so now you see we can separate we can now move and modify her different parts because we colored them differently so they gave them all their own material so that's what I meant by it helps later on when you're trying to build so I'm just gonna go into sculpt mode real quick although I think maybe the soft select might be better but let's try sculpt out first uh, scope mode. Let me just grab my shorts, pull them up. And then we use the inflate because I'm lazy. And we just grab again. Pull up my shorts. And I'm going to select this one down here and do the same thing pretty much. Go to material, go to inflate, just blow this up real quick. Anywhere you see yellow peeking through, we're going to want to puff that up a little bit. You can always do the soft select and pull it out, but um, I'm kind of lazy. So I just do a quick puffing <laughs> and we keep going. Now you may want to smooth it out. I heard some people do that. It's too high. Um, to smooth out the marvelous bumps, but it doesn't bother me enough to actually mess with it right now So I'm just going to puff it back up Okay So our avatar is nice and check um, Wait, a little yellow puffing up right there All right Now we're ready to rig so we have our clothes done and you can rig them all at once or you could do them separately I'm just gonna do it together so I'm just gonna select everything back into object mode select them all now let's go back to this layer there we go I'm gonna select them all and then join it to make this a little easier then we're going to go back to our model. We're going to select the clothes. Hold down. Now, <clears throat> because this is an avatar, I noticed that a problem when you try to assign uh, it to the avatar rig. So if you were to just do like we do normal avatar stuff, select the clothes, select the loops, then go over to the side. Hmm. Go over to the side and press assign armature. You may get this error. If you try to put those there and try to assign it again, it's still an error. So what we're going to do is just assign it manually. I mean, it's, it still works. So just select the close, select the loops, press control P, and then select to automatic weights. And then go into pose mode and you can see we have the clothes to the rig now this is why I kind of should have done it separate because it didn't quite grasp the rig because um, the weights properly because uh, these <clears throat> the black shorts didn't grasp the rig properly because the tights were in the way I guess it doesn't matter. We're going to try to continue on from there. The angle. Ugh, sorry about that. Uh, where were we? Um, the shorts didn't take the weights right. So we can still fix that later. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go into object mode real quick. Select the body. Hold down the shift key. Select the outfit. And we're going to go into weight paint. 
and scroll down to the tools and then transfer weights and then make sure the nearest face is selected that's one I like the most and we're going to switch the loops over actually I forgot this from the loops to is Avastar <coughs> oh jeez tools physics Avastar and we're going to press skin that's what we need and now I'm like stick I like those and we're going to select second life base so we can see all the bolts <coughs> I'm going to try moving it so that's a lot better but we may need to still do some more like correctional painting if we felt like it but I don't <laughs> oh that's no good so I'm going to change this from black to something that I can actually see so press A weights I actually think it might be stuck on the crotch a little bit so this is a great lesson in case you're rigging your pants and you notice that your crotch is kind of attaching onto the other leg like so you can fix that by pressing this button right here face selection for mass painting select the face and doubt in a question turn this weight to zero and remove the heat from it if it <clears throat> full strength please thank you there we go I cleared everything up in a little triangle here Okay, now you want to go up here. All of that works. It's looking good from the back. So once we see that the weights are actually working, we're going to export it to where in Second Life. So you just select only the clothes, go to File, Export, Avastar, and we're going to name it Tutorial Outfit day and that's it so let's go over to second life and import it so here I am at second life build upload model uh, tutorial outfit <clears throat> so here's my clothes I'm gonna go over here and check skin weight we're going to turn this to zero and that to zero. Upload again. And you see it's only one impact and only 11L for three outfit parts. <laughs> and now we're going to add it to. <clears throat> and let's see what happens. Uh, uh, any minute now. One thing I hate about the beta grade, it's always a lag when I go to put clothes on. At least this is just that time of day. So, give me one second. There we go. Sorry, the beta grade was down. So I wasn't loading right. So here I am with my clothes. Now, I did miss some um, skin popping through. But, you know, this has alphas. So you can just alpha out your leg. Whoops. Huh, this crappy alphas. Alright, so you may want to go puff that out <laughs> in Marvel in a blender and fix it a bit. But for the most part, everything else kind of went, right? <clears throat> now we have our clothes. And you see they're all on their own material. So I can have uh, black leggings or red shorts and pink shirt. <clears throat> and it's close. But where's the fun in this? We'll have to make textures for it. Now, excuse me for a second. I have no idea why I'm suddenly hacking up a lung. But now we have our clothes made. We have to texture our clothes. And this is where Photoshop 
comes into play. But beforehand, we're going to have to bake a texture for this real quick. So I'm just going to stand back on a stand because I don't like not standing in a sandbox. Oh, see, <laughs> no leg problem. Alright, I don't like standing freely in a sandbox. So I'm going to sit back on this post hand. We're going to close Second Life and then go right into, uh, what's it called? Photoshop. No, back. wait, back to Blender and make a bake map. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Okay, so we have our clothes and we know they're fabulous. Let's go into... Let's close this real quick so I can show you how to make it open. Alright, what we're going to do is go to the top and where this is. And we're going to see it go from arrow to star. And we're going to create a new, a new window over here. And we're going to change this window to UV Editor. And when you click on your clothes and go L, you'll see it has the same design we made while we were in Marvelous Designer. Now I like to maximize all the space in this UV map as I can. So we're going to select L again and select this shirt. And I'm going to press the G key and then move it out here for a second. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. We'll just press L and then G and move it here. So press L one more time, then G again, and then this time we're going to press S and scale it to maximize the space in here. And we're going to make it big enough that it's not tiny like it was before, but still big enough to be able to um, fit both parts of it in here. So we have that part right there. We're going to press L, then G, and then scratch this again and make it, make it work somehow. <laughs> So, let me see. I guess this is the back. We really don't have to have it as big as the front would be. So we just fit it in bounds. And now we have our texture for the shirt. So I'm going to do the same thing for the pants. So just press A, press L. L, S. Get a little more G to put it in bounds. Maybe a little smaller. Okay. We'll do the same thing here. S G S G here. And make it a little smaller. If you want to manipulate it, you can do the same thing. You just press uh C B to select whatever you want to manipulate one side and I will turn on proportional editing and you can manipulate the shape of that if you want but I, let's just keep it simple and not mess with that so we do the same thing for our last port and that's the shorts so we press L for the shorts press L again press S G over here Whoops, I forgot this so one's gonna disable this. L here, G there, here we go. L here, G here, here we go. L here, G here. <laughs> Move that there. And then we're gonna press L again, G again, right here, and stretch so that our shorts fit. So the bigger it is, the more detail you'll be able to put onto it. At least that's what the guy who taught the video I learned taught me. So and there we go. So now we have our maps all set out and now we can start baking. Wow this tutorial is pretty long isn't it? <laughs> We're almost done. Once you get texturing we'll be able to do it. So you need to take a break. Feel free to do so. Alright we're at the home stretch now. It's time to bake. So now that we have our shorts ready we're going to create a new texture and we're going to say t-shirt t-shirt and we're going to make it 2000 by 2000 and I'm going to hit OK uh, let's just select our t-shirt real quick press L let's select the t-shirt go to this button right here and we're going to press shirt we'll stretch out like this uh, we're going to uh, enable the ambient occlusion if it's not 
So the closing and I don't know if I scroll down to samples. The more samples you put in, the smoother it'll be. Uh, the less they are, the more grainy the bake will be. So I'm going to turn it to 10. 20 is the magic number from what I've been told. And I'm going to put my material and make it white because if I leave it red like this, when we go to bake it, it's going to bake red. So we're going to turn that, that, and then turn the specula up to white as well. Maybe a little gray. And let's see what happens. Push this camera button right here to go into render mode and we just press bake. Well, we press AO, then we press bake. And then, as you can see, it'll start baking. Depending on how fast your computer is, that's how fast it'll take the bake, but it does, usually doesn't take that long. So, I'm just going to pause it while it's baking and come back when we bake all the layers. Okay. Our shirt stopped baking, and then we would just do the same thing with the pants. Uh, select, go into object mode, so the pants, create a new texture, let's call these shorts, make sure it's 2000 by 2000, press OK, zoom out so you can see it, <laughs> um, with the pants selected. Just make sure it's on shorts. We have t-shirt here that baked early, so I'm going to save this before something happened to it. So you're just going to save the image as, and uh, give me the class t-shirt. Go to the pants. Make the material diffuse white. Like I said, or bake white, uh, black if you didn't. Intensity yet to spectacular to light, maybe a little gray, just like that. Um, add the shorts, sign, anyway. Um, and then we just go here and bake again. As you can see, it's baking real quick. No, not real quick, it's just baking. So I'm gonna let that bake and I'll come back again when it's all done. See if my mouse can get up there. And I did. Okay, those are the shorts. And nah, do we really need to do the tights? Nah, we're good. We don't need to do the tights. You guys got the gist of it. Okay, so, um, oh, but what if you want, all right, for the sake of there may be somebody who wants no print tights, you know, like me. Let's bake the tights. So what are we going to do? New men, new image, tights, close, zoom out, change the color, make sure that it's white. Uh, make it white. <sighs> er, spectacular. So, so, so. Oops, let's close that. Press tab. Let's look at this real quick. Remember, there were some issues here with some stuff's poking through. So, let's let the pants sculpt mode inflate real quick. Whoops, uh, nope, I need to select these. Yeah, I'm gonna flake a little bit. Giving our kimono a little booty. Alright. That should cover up those spots we saw earlier. If not, I'm just gonna select the bones real quick. And turn off the x ray. Oh, see, so that's how I missed it. That is a lot of skin. Alright, so good to turn off that every now and then and look at it. Alright. Yeah, it's good enough. Okay, so we got that. We have the pants with the tights. Just with the tights. Tab. 
and then we go to baking off center. So we bake again and wait. It might go a little faster because I don't have Marvelous Designer open. But we're still going to pause and come back when our pants are done baking. Okay, so you see because I had the shorts on on top of the stocking layer, this layer is all black because there was no light for it to bake and shadow off. So that's pretty cool. Alright, so let's save this. Save as t-shirt. These are tights. And then we're going to select my shorts, which are surprised are still here. Uh -huh, save image. Oops. Save as. And as shorts. And I'm going to save all of this. I'm going to go to the folder because for some reason, every time... Every time I do an export with these things, they over they always overwrite. So I'm going to just make a copy of these, just in case these come out black for some reason. There we go. And then we're going to export this out. Um, okay. So I'm just going to save this. And my tights. Um, I like to do every, the clothes what are these things i like to paint to texture paint my clothes one at a time so i'm going to just take the t-shirt and paint that and we're gonna let's see we'll have to re-export it because i've changed the uv maps around from the last one we did the first one so we'll see this alpha star tutorial outfit two one e. and i'm going to select the top because that's where we're going to paint on I'm going to export this as Avastar, and I'm just going to show it as tutorial shirt. Dot day. And that's pretty much all we have to do with Blender right now. So I'm just going to close this and go dive into Photoshop, and I'll meet you there. Whew, this is quite a workout, but we're almost done. Alright, so now that we have our t-shirt in here, we're just going to roll it forward so that we can get it right in front of us. We can either save this as a custom view so we can go new front. So if we were to rotate it a bit, we can just select new front. It'll snap back to where we want to paint it. So when you have it in here, you're going to use the 3D tools to rotate it. And that's this down here in a circle with an orbit. What is you can rotate it the way you want. Don't use any of the traditional two two or mess it up. So we're gonna undo that. We only want to move it left using the orbit or go click on the hold down click and hold down the orbit and uh, use the pan tool if you want to move it from side to side uh, I don't put it back so these are the tools you want to use to move and rotate your stuff never use these on 3d stuff these on 3d stuff this no okay so we have it rolled and rotated to where we want it different still a little crooked and we want to paint but before we paint we have to click on the diffuse texture right here and it should have the texture we baked in blender but just in case it don't we can just uh, open up the file set so t-shirt and drag it in there and we have that shading we can paint on top of create a new layer I so I like to create a backsplash if you want to put your store logo and all that rest of that junk in here, you can. So, mine. <laughs> mine. Nobody's going to see that, but still, it's fun to draw in a dead space. Uh, so, I like to have a background here. And I do like to... Actually, I'm going to have to minimize this a little bit. So, you can see the top part. There we go. Uh... Whoops, I'm gonna press OK. And I actually like to blur this a bit. So I'm gonna put blur. Well, that's a bit much. But just for a softer shading, blur it a bit. Uh, create a new layer. 
and then we go back to our 3D and you see well it made no difference but it will make a difference when you're painting so then you can just start drawing on it the way you normally would now if it looks a little choppy you can try making it bigger because marvelous design textures are usually huge um, so I'm going to see what image size this is. It's supposed to be 2,000 by 2,000 like it was in there. So we're going to just change this to 2,000 by 2,000. And where it once was choppy, now shall be smooth. It's a little choppy because I'm still um, recording. But that usually smooths everything out. So I'm just going to make this a solid color. Oops, let's select the material again and we're going to remove this layer because it's got junk on it create a new layer uh, pink bucket pink multiply if you wish whatever you want to make it to get the effect you want uh, shoot I think maybe this whoa it broke Mm. Hmm. Ugh, gosh. I hate designing on the fly. <laughs> All right. Um. Hmm. See, this is why I wanted that to be white. So let me change this. We just go to edit and photo arrangements and brightness and contrast make this white so my stupid stuff won't be and then multiply through that and that gives me the pink I want create this so I'm gonna go over here to the it's all pink uh, we can draw designs more designs on there if we want it to so I'm just gonna select this layer multiply hit darker pink and we can draw in the shading if we want boobs are down here for this character it's cute it is no boobs it's so flat <laughs> god the kimonos are flat so you basically can draw and have fun use all your brushes and stuff it won't be as laggy as this but mine is because I have so many 3d programs open right now that it makes photoshop's 3d programming uh painting lag Okay, so now you know you can paint and do all the stuff, but maybe you want to add a decal to it. So I'm just going to go to my inventory. I'm going to grab my favorite t-shirt decal. If every pork chop were perfect, we wouldn't have hot dogs. Drag it and scale it to as wherever you want it. Press play. And then you're going to select a paintbrush and edit it and make it no longer a smart object. Then you're gonna click on the thing you just dragged in and then merge down. And there we go. It's on the texture. No harm, no fun, no. So here we have it already there. I'm just gonna erase the gunk I had on it earlier. And we're going to just go to save as uh, desktop Kimono classes. I'm going to save this as a ping in JPEG because I want to make sure it stays solid and there's no transparencies in it. Pork chop shirt. Save. Now I'm going to speed things up a little bit. So this right here. I already imported our outfit we made in here. The new one back into... I exported it from Blender into Photoshop. Ugh! You know what I mean. I exported it from Blender two second life to save time and now i'm going to up select this uh close drag on the ground because i don't feel like uploading it to the beta grid so i'm just going to select this grant this edit linked which is my shirt texture local because i want to do this now without waiting and we can actually take up more time and just grab all the rest of the textures. This one, this one, and that one. And hit that. So I have my pork chop shirt. Very pork chop for perfect. <laughs> I love that saying. So I'm going to select my shorts. 
and then we have my shirts, tie, so it's all colored in, so just going to half-ass it here, make this purple, and make that black, I love black shorts. I'm going to take this back into my inventory, and then slap it on, and then when we wear it, you see, we have our outfit. And that is how you make it. Now you see there are still some clipping right here. We can just pull that back out in a blender and fix it till it looks right. Uh, it could be more rigging, but for the most part, it's probably just too tight there. All right, so that's it in a nutshell. A very big walnut shell <laughs> on how to make clothes for the kimono avatar from start to finish i hope it helped you i hope you are able to make clothes with this tutorial and if you have any other avatar you would like to learn how to make clothes for uh submit the request and if i got money to afford it i'll try my best to make clothes for it also just for the heck of it i'm going to toss this into the uh kit so that you can play with it too i mean yeah what's one more free outfit for your super expensive kimono avatar right <laughs> all right this has been zero the 10th and i was your teacher today uh, have a good day and have fun creating